Hey friend, John McLennan here, and in this video you're gonna learn how to play You Make It Feel Like Christmas, as recorded by Gwen Stefani and Blake Shelton. Now this is a groovy song in the key of C that just uses four chords, essentially. I'm gonna break the entire thing down for you. There's about two sections that you need to know so you can get playing this song today. But keep in mind for this lesson, I am gonna be using a lot of bar chords. Now you could take the same chords and play them as open position chords, but it's gonna sound a lot more like the recording if you can get down the bar chords. So as I mentioned, there's essentially four shapes, so I'll go through all of those. But before we dive into it, if you're new to the channel, I wanna give you a gift right away. I have this awesome resource that's gonna show you the five must-know chords and scales to map out your entire guitar neck. And I was able to put this on just one page. It's what I call my fretboard guide, and this is so useful for understanding the guitar neck. I used to look down at the neck and feel so much more confused until I understood just this simple way of putting it together Together, and I want to share it with you. You can grab it completely for free. Just go to johnmclennan.com slash fretboard guide and you can grab it right there as my gift to you. So hope you enjoy that. And with that said, let's break it down. All right, so the intro just starts off on a C chord and then we go into the verse progression, which is what I played at the top of this video. It sounds like this. So that's one time through the progression there. It's eight bars long and it uses four chords. Let me show you those chords. So I'm starting out on a C bar chord and this is starting on the third fret of the fifth string. I'm playing three, then five, five, five. And I'm doing a bar there. Sometimes I use my pinky like this. Sometimes I use my ring finger. I actually kind of mix them up a little bit. This is a good one to start with, the ring finger. And I'm not playing the low E or the high E strings there. I'm just playing those middle strings. From there, I'm going to A minor, which looks like this at the fifth fret, five, seven, seven, five, five, five. Then I drop it down to F, so it's the same shape, but I add my middle finger and go to the first fret there. That's one, three, three, two, one, one. Then shift this up to G here, but what I'm gonna do is make it a G7 sus4. Love this chord. Here I'm playing three on the low sixth string, then five, three, five, and then that resolves back to C. So we start out with two bars of C. One, two, three, four, stay there. Two, three, four, then go to A minor. Two, three, four, stay there, two bars. Then these chords move quicker. One bar of F, and then one bar of G7 sus, and then two bars back on C. So it ends with two bars of C and then it starts with two bars of C. So when you loop it around, it's actually four bars of that C chord. Now next, you're gonna wanna add some rhythm to this chord progression. So what I would recommend as a strumming pattern is something like this. So it's just a one bar pattern there. We're using some eighth notes and some 16th notes. We're gonna start on the downbeat and go one and two and up. So that's down, 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 up. Okay, one and two and up. Bop, 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 bop. That's the first half of it. Then the second half goes. So here we're gonna start on an up strum. We'll go three, E and up. So we're playing on the off beats there, 16th note off beats, three E and a, uh, then four E and a. Uh. So down, up, down to finish. So the second half goes up, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, ba, 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 ba. So if I put those two parts together, it sounds like this. 
That's down, 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 up, 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 down, up, down. Ba, 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 ba. Or one and two e and a three e and a four e and a. Then it repeats. Then I just take that through the changes. So I go to the A minor. F. G7 sus. C. So that's what I would play for the strumming pattern and the verse. Now, I am using a lot of bar chords there, and I'm playing chords like C and A minor that could be played so much easier by just playing C and A minor. But the problem is, is it's hard to get that groove without a ton of strum hand muting. For example, like... You could do that, but you could hear it just doesn't have the same sound. And then you still gotta play, you know, some kind of bar chord here for F usually, unless you just do like the middle notes like that. So that's why I would recommend those bar chords. So that is the verse section. Again, though, if it's too hard, you could always play just a slightly different modified version of it, just strumming, you know, basic open chords, and that would work as well. So for the bridge, this is the next section, or the chorus, and this is where they sing sweet gingerbread molasses. Here's what that sounds like. Three, four. Then we're back to either our reintro there to go back to the first section where you would just go back to the C because that's how the whole tune starts. It just starts on C, you know, with the drums and bass. So for this B section, I started now on the F chord. So we've got no new chords, just a different order. We're gonna go F, bring that up to A minor, then C, then G7, sus4. So that's the first four bars. Now I'll keep the same strumming pattern going, so... One bar... or one strumming pattern per chord. Then back, F, second half, A minor, then we go F, G. So that's the chorus section. Here it is played as one piece. Again, this is where the lyrics sing sweet gingerbread. One, two, three, four. All right, there's one final part we need to know, and this is the last verse. So this is how the tune ends, is you go back to the verse. Same as before. Okay, so that was all the same. Now normally we would go back to C, but this is where they sing, you make it feel like Christmas. And they go up to this A minor at the very end. So it's gonna go A minor, then C. Then we repeat that F, this is called a tag. F to G, and then we finish. You make it feel like Christmas, and we just resolve back to C. Then we play this. So this is the ending. We play one bar of that strumming pattern the way we've been doing throughout the whole song. One and two e and a three e and a four e and a. And then we end in the second beat. We go one and two e and a. We end on that up strum. So ba 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 ba. 
that's how it ends. So take your time with those two main sections and then add in the tag. If you get those parts together, you've essentially got all the pieces for the song. Then what you want to do is try and play it along with the recording. And remember, if those bar chords are too hard, you can always convert them to basically just, you know, open position C and A minor, and that's going to be easier to play on the fretting hand. And to help you even more, be sure to grab my ultimate fretboard guide at the first link down below. And this is one of the most useful pages that I've ever put together for guitar instruction. It's just one page. It's going to show you the five chords and the five scales that I use to map the fretboard. So basically, when I look down at the neck, this is what I see. It's a system that I fit basically anything I'm playing into, whether it's a rhythm part or I'm taking a solo or working on some chords on the neck, it all ties back into this. So you can grab your copy completely for free. Just go to johnmcclennan.com slash fretboard guide or use the first link down below as my gift to you. Hope you enjoy that. Happy holidays. Keep practicing and we'll see you in another video real soon.